Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Um, so it is time for some basic hills. Now these are one of the simplest pieces of terrain that you can make. Um, a good while back now um, there was a, a call put out for play input into making terrain uh, by one of the big companies that produces a, a magazine that's to do with a short fella with a beard. Can't mention them. And one of my comments was accepted and it basically went along the lines of you never find a battlefield that looks like a billiard table so if you're going to make anything at least make some hills and that holds pretty much true um, unless of course you're fighting on a, a man-made thing like a, a disused sports ground or a runway uh, where that has been man-made and manufactured to be flat and you can get away with it. Um, even if you could just go out to a, a normal field and, and look across at the ground you're going to find dips and rises and things like that. It may not obscure things entirely but depending on where you're standing it may be that you can only see sort of like half a, a person as they're walking towards you. So with that in mind we are going to make some hills and I'm going to use two separate materials. The first one is foam card. Now it makes for essentially a low flat area of ground um, but it's raised up a little bit from the table so it's not a true hill it, it just sort of like signifies those, those dips and gullies that you, you, you'll find on a, a much wider um, piece of ground okay the second one that I'm going to use is polystyrene it's a little bit thicker so this is a, a far more sharper rise and we will eventually put the two together because if you think about it hills don't go like that even though kids draw them like that that's a mountain um, an actual hill starts off with quite a shallow rise and then goes up at a more acute angle and then gently tapers off at the top as it as it flattens out so we'll use a mix of both of these to get a set of hills and you can you, you stack them up and um, or you can use them independently it's entirely up to you Joe Battlefield very simple to make very basic tools so let's get cracking so before I get started I'm just going to do a quick size comparison here because obviously if I'm using these as a set what I want to do is make sure that as I go up each tier there's going to be at least some space to put a miniature at each level so if we reckon yeah that looks around about the right size for a, a miniature stand so I'll have that piece around about that size and then that off cut over there should be ample for the other one foam card so a simple craft knife oh come on looks like I'm going to have to change knives because this one is looking way too blunt now nah, that's no good at all excuse me one second okay this one seems to be far better so I'll just get uh, 
Yeah, that's far better. Right, now, we'll just start off by rounding it out slightly. Okay, that's reasonable. And shall I use that side? And then we just want to make sure because we don't want um, you know straight upsides on it. We're just going to chamfer the edge just by holding the knife at a little bit of an angle. Actually, it works better if you pull towards you. And just get a bit of bit better shape to it. Just like that. I'll get on and get the rest of this done. So, first two hills cut out and chamfered. Alright. And obviously when you play you're going to stack them like that. But this one is going to come in the middle. So we'll move those to one side. Now, you can use a craft knife for this. But because I have one, I'm going to go to my new best friend, the polystyrene cutter. Now, on the other ones, I cut the, uh, the shape out first and then chamfered them. With this, I am simply, uh, where do I want to start from? About there. Going to go straight in with a chamfer cut. Actually, I'm going to take that one because there's a little bit of a mark on the inside of the polystyrene there I'm actually going to shorten the length of this hill just so that that doesn't have any bearing on things that's better a little bit of a wipe to get rid of those excess stringy bits and let's see how it lines up okay so I wasn't too happy with the um, with the sizing so I'm going to take a little bit more off this one
just around there and because we can um, yeah why don't we pretty this up just a little bit and you'll see what I'm gonna do now on that bit more and just a wee bit there okay looking reasonable let's get on with some decoration so first little bit of preparation because with a, a hot wire polystyrene cutter you do get this sort of stringy bits of foam um, especially on on this kind of expanded polystyrene I'm just going to use a, a normal scourer and just gently clean all that off so that we're going to have it it's uh, it's not going to get in in the way of any paint job that we give it which is going to be happening very very shortly next those indentations up on the uh, top level that I carved out let's just get a dab of PVA on them like so and apply some ground cover straight builder sand number two blend I'll leave that a couple of minutes to dry right you are so that's been uh, left for about 10-15 minutes shook the excess off force dried the rest with my trusty hair dryer because let's face it time is of the essence and we love using a hair dryer um, so that is now on and pretty much set so it's time to get painting all three pieces so I'll show you on the um, small one and then I'll get on and do the larger ones off camera but when it's a, a nice flat area rather than using a brush remember that scourer I used for the uh, foam well that can do large areas quite easily see how quick that is okay now I'm just using um, straight household paint it's my go-to for terrain make sure we get around the edges now I'm just using a, a straight grey basically um, because we've got different colours of material I'm placing a base coat on them first just so that when it comes to the, the top layers it's actually going to look a little bit more uniform so I will get on with that and we'll check in shortly right so that's them with the base coat on um, yes it looks patchy but bear in mind that we've got another coat of paint going on top of this and then more ground cover so quite frankly I'm not too worried about the the finish and yes it, it looks I mean you wouldn't want that on your walls but it's the base coat it's an undercoat for a model and I'm happy with that one thing that I should have mentioned um, just on that rough area that we've done with the builder sand rather than using this I did um, use, uh, use the same household paint but I watered it down a little bit and just dabbed on with a paintbrush um, because we don't want anything sort of like scraping it off alright once it's got a couple of paints on um, and the, the, there's been more curing time for the PVA um, that will be very very difficult to shift but in the construction stage because we are doing it in a faster manner than um, other people might then it just pays to um, do it a little bit differently and just um, just take into account the fact that it's not completely set so I will leave these to dry for 
um, a couple of minutes and then I'll hit them with the hair dryer and force dry them and then we'll move on to the next coat of paint right so quick update um, after drying them um, the polystyrene I wasn't too happy um, it, it came through very light the, the white was very much um, showing through so I just gave that one another quick coat and because I had excess paint I, um, I did another touch up on the larger piece but now that that is all dry it is time to go for the dirt colour now soda can um, actually this one isn't uh, the daughter has been having a slight tipple um, but any soda can take the, the ring pull off pop it up, uh, upside down and then you've got a nice um, mixing tray there the reason why I'm using a, a larger flatter one as opposed to um, a pop bottle that I would normally use is because we're going to be using the sponge for the, the large areas again so I will start mixing some of this up now I've got a, a tan colour um, it's Reno Art um, it's just a, a cheap acrylic it's quite close to the kind of colour that I want so we'll get a decent amount of that in there but because we are going to denature it and we're going to be using a um, a light grey colour I'm just going to add in a bit of darker brown because we want it soil coloured rather than sandy coloured and then get a dollop of grey there we go and we'll just mix that all up I'm not too worried about mixing it through thoroughly because yeah, you always get variations in in colour on ground depending on moisture content of the soil and things like that yeah that's looking okay right so because I didn't show you it last time I'm going to dab coat that soil there so just I had paint on the brush a bit of water and then just dab it so that you're not brushing it on let's get a bit more water there you know brushing it on and getting the um, the the sand lifting off and leaving you with bare patches on the model okay that's that area done just slide that over bring that one to the center and again exactly the same deal we're just using the sponge and making sure the edges are done like that so I'm doing this as fast as possible Dun, dun, dun. Do, 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 do. A bit more pigment just on that area because it was looking a bit shallow. Then pop it flat. A little bit of water. get that coated all right yeah not too bad I will get on and get the others painted now so the very last piece of painting we're going to do before we start putting some flock on I'm just going to give this um, sort of broken earth area a very quick dry brush with the light grey just so that it pops and stands out a little bit. There we go. Yeah, that looks more like rocks and dirt, doesn't it? Just a 
just there. Right, on to flocking. So for this I'm going to use quite a large old lid. Um, we're going to mix up some uh, watered down PVA. First of all, just a dash of detergent that breaks the surface tension of the water and the glue and it allows it to soak up into your ground cover. Um, let's get a nice big dollop of PVA in there. And then a dash of water. And get it mixed through. Now I'm going to be using, because again because it's um, quite a large piece of terrain, I'm going to be using quite a large brush to apply this with. Make sure that's all nice and mixed. Part of the reason why we're adding the water is just to make sure that the PVA doesn't, because we're covering such a large piece, we don't want the PVA to start setting uh, before we're finished. So, I always like to try and do it in a, in a one act. Get all those edges done. Just take a little bit of care. I don't mind too much if we uh, if we go onto that broken ground a little bit, but I do want to avoid it if I can. I want an amount of overlap, but not much. Just up to a smaller brush for this area. Just get that in and around under there. And then the top area. Get the rest of the top done quick as you can because like I say you don't want the PVA drying out on you already and excuse my cell phone in the background hope you can see that that's just a mix of uh, light and medium green flock and it just goes straight on. Make sure that you have a good build up on those edges because if you're going to miss anywhere that's where it's going to be and of course because we're doing it in the tree we just can reclaim any of that give it a bit of a press around the edges and then we leave that to dry for a little while and move on to the next hill. So a very quick addendum. Um, once they were left to dry overnight uh, I found there was a little bit of a problem and you do get this on some um, larger pieces. PVA when it dries tends to contract and so what had happened was that this particular one um, had started lifting up at the edges and, and was sort of like more of a dish shape. Um, very easy to rectify, just flip it over, work out where exactly the risers are going and then on the reverse side just add another quick coat of PVA. And as that one dries, it should even things out. There you go. That should be sorted. Well, there you go. Flocks applied to um, all three pieces. 
and it's been given a chance to dry and there they are stacked up um, different materials and let's face it because of the paint job and the uh, the the flocking covering you can't particularly tell the difference but obviously um, yeah different heights and and I'm quite happy with the way that stacks up that's uh, that's not bad at all if I do say so myself so there you have it nice basic hills little bit of decoration just to um, break things up a little bit I will do another one on other kinds of hills but that's the basic type so do keep following there is um, plenty more of uh, plenty more stuff to, to to craft and build and things like that please hit the like and subscribe and the bell and share it and do whatever it is you have to um, this kind of thing must be of use to to some of your friends so feel free to share it around until then there's a project get crafting